In this video, we're going to go over the statement of cash flows. I want to remind you that there are five minute videos available on the statement of cash flows as well as other topics. In Blackboard, you'll see that on the left hand side in the panel. Click on those five minute videos if you need some more instruction. We're going to go over the three sections of the cash flow statement. This is really the majority of what you need to know because if you know what goes into each section you'll be able to do these cash flow statements so let's go through that in your operating activities i want you to think of this as your daily business so if it's something that occurs normally in your business operations it's going to go into your operating activities let me give you some examples and I'll separate this by cash inflows and outflows so it's a little bit easier to remember. Your cash inflows. This is your sale of goods or services. You have, maybe you might receive some interest. Would also go into this section or receipt of dividends. The out outflows would consist of payment for inventory. Or payment for your salary and wages. or taxes, or payment to lenders for interest. And any other random expenses you might find. Then we move on to your investing activities. In this section, it's easy to remember property, plant, and equipment go here. So anything to do with that or loans to others. That's what you're going to look for. Some key things to remember. Again, let's go through those cash inflows. Give you some examples of those. This is going to be the sale of property, plant, and equipment. It's going to be any kind of debt investment also goes here. And then a cash inflow would be collection on those loans to others. Some cash outflows or examples of those in the investing section would be purchase of property, plant, and equipment. It's also going to be, again, cash outflows might be, a, again, debt investment. We're actually purchasing that. And then loans to others. And finally, that last section of your cash flow statement is the financing activities. Here, I want you to remember that stockholders equity section of your balance sheet. If it shows up there, it's going to show up in this section. What also goes here, um, you might want to think of bonds, you're selling bonds, or loans for us. or for our company. So you'll notice the difference in investing. If we have loans that go out to others, that's gonna go into an investing section. Financing our loans that we take out for ourselves. So our cash inflows here are going to be things like sales of securities,
equity securities like stock bond stocks and bonds or also um, issuance of bonds again Those are really the major things you're going to see in here. Your cash outflows. Those are going to be things like payment of dividends. Um, if we're redeeming long-term debt, And also if we reacquire capital stock. Let me rewrite that. So basically your treasury stock. So those are some common things to look out for. So you can categorize those real quickly. I want to point out some of where I want you to really focus on. This, these are some areas where most mistakes are made. And it's the interest. Anything with interest goes into the operating section. That's one area that we want to make sure that we distinguish between interest because when we think about loans, we know those are going to other sections. Another area is dividends. Notice if we receive dividends, that's going into the operating section. Whereas the payment of dividends is part of your financing activities. So those are things that we really want to focus and make sure that we're putting into the right section. So let's go down. Again, if you have that part where everything belongs, you have most of this chapter. We want to make sure um, you know how to do one of these indirect methods of preparing your statement of cash flows. So we're going to go through this problem. We're going to pull out some of the information we need because I know it's a lot of information. And then we'll build that statement of cash flows. So in this problem, first their thing I want to go through is that additional information. It's actually at the bottom of your homework because we tend to miss these pieces, if they're kind of thrown in there, and this is typically important information. So dividends were declared and paid. We just went through that. So that's part of our financing section. We want to make sure we write down where these are going so that when we go back and start building this, we know we've captured everything. Depreciation expense and amortization expense are included in our operating expenses. I want you to remember, any non-cash expense has to be added back in the indirect method. And is added back to that operating section, to the operating activities because it hits our net income, but it's a non-cash expense. They tell us there's no unrealized gains or losses we have to worry about. And then it tells us that we had equipment that cost $20,000, was 70% depreciated, and it was sold during 2020. The first thing I wanna look at is what does that journal entry look like? Because that's gonna help us determine what impact this is going to have. We got some cash. It doesn't tell us how much yet. We'll get there. We know when we sell something, we have to get that accumulated depreciation off our books, which means we need a debit to accumulated depreciation. We're going to credit that equipment, get it off our books. We know that was 20000 And if I look down here at my income statement, it's showing me I have a gain on sale of 2000 So we're going to include that as well. So 
So knowing this information, I also know that it was 70% depreciated at the time it was sold, which means the accumulated depreciation on that equipment was 14,000, which is that 20,000 times 70%. So that means by default, the cash I received in this transaction was $8,000. We are, when we look at that balance sheet, we're gonna to need to remember that our equipment is $20,000 less. We received this gain. Our accumulated depreciation is also $20,000 less because of this transaction. So let's look at our comparative balance sheet. When we're doing the statement of cash flows, the first thing we're going to do is just kind of go through this balance sheet and look at the differences in all of these com columns. We don't care about cash. We're trying to figure that out, what happened in cash. But we'll go through each of the other items. Note whether there was an increase or decrease in that item. So in accounts receivable, it was an $11,000 difference. Short-term debt investment increased by $17,000. That inventory decreased by $20,000. Remember, we're looking at 2020. Prepaid rent was an increase of $1,000. Equipment was an increase of 24,000. Cumulative depreciation, an increase of 10,000. And then we have this copyright was a decrease of 4,000. All right, so we go down to our liabilities. We're gonna look at those as well. That was an increase of 6,000. A decrease of 2,000, increase of 4,000, decrease of 2,000, decrease of 9,000. We have no difference here, no difference here. Retain earnings there, a difference there of 21,000. All right, so now that we have the differences between the years, we can go down and use the information from this and from our income statement to start building this statement of cash flows. So let's do that. We're gonna start with our operating section. And you're gonna to need to put this in a little bit cleaner, note the date and everything else, but for the sake of trying to fit it all on one page, I'm going to take a, some shortcuts. So first we start with the cash from operating activities. And we always start with our net income in this indirect method. This is coming directly from our income statement. Now we're gonna back into everything that was provided to us so we can find out what kind of cash is actually coming in and out of this operating section. Some things we always add back in are those non-cash expenses like depreciation expense. We also had some amortization. Remember they told, uh, told us in that additional information that those were included. We need to adjust for that. One other thing that we always adjust for is a gain on sale of equipment. Again, a non-cash transaction that is actually impacting our net income. So let's start with that. We have our depreciation expense. Depreciation expense, when we're look, since it's included in these operating expenses here, but we don't know how much that is, we're gonna look to our 
difference in accumulated depreciation. So we have 10,000, but we have to remember that our accumulated depreciation actually decreased by 14,000 this year because of that sale. So we're gonna take that 10,000 and make sure we include that our accumulated depreciation decreased by 14,000 because of that transaction. So our total depreciation expense for the year is actually 24,000. And we're gonna add that back in. Our amortization expense is coming from the copyrights, right? We're gonna, that was a $4,000 decrease. We're gonna add that back in. And then we have that gain on our sale right here. We're going to deduct that because we didn't actually receive money for that. So those are those three things you're always gonna look for, those non-cash transactions. And then we're going to go through and pull out everything that's happening in our balance sheet that we need to adjust. So we'll just kind of go in order here, I think. We have accounts receivable. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually highlight them to make sure I've accounted for everything. When we get to the point where we have so much information, we wanna make sure we've included everything. So accounts receivable, that $11,000. It was an increase in accounts receivable, so we'll record that. And remember, anything that has to do with an asset, if it's an increase in your accounts receivable, we're actually going to deduct that. My rule of thumb when it comes to cash flow statement is if it's an asset, we do the opposite. If it's a liability, we do the same. It's just easy to remember that. So we have accounted for our accounts receivable. Now the next thing on the list is our short-term in debt investment. Remember, anything of that short-term debt investment, that's going to go, let's take a look up here. Anything with a debt investment actually goes to our investing section. So don't let that confuse you. Make a note to remind ourselves to put this into the investing section. Then we have our inventory. Inventory is gonna go into the operating, that's part of our operating section. We have a decrease in inventory. First of all, let me make sure I note that I got that. So we have a decrease in inventory. Because that's an, app, an asset, we're gonna do the opposite. So we're gonna add that $20,000 back. So we'll go back up, come down the line. We have an increase in prepaid rent. That means I'm going to deduct that. Make sure I note that I included that. We already accounted for this um, depreciation, so I'm gonna highlight that as well. Our equipment increase, but remember equipment is going into that investing section. 
Anything with doing with property, plant, and equipment is investing. And then we have the copyright. We already took care of that as part of those things of non-cash transactions. So now we're going to come down and look at our liabilities. We have an increase in accounts payable. And I forgot how much it was. 6,000. Liabilities do the same. So we're going to add that 6,000 in. What's next? Took care of that. We have a decrease in income tax payable. We're going to record that. And it was 2000 the liability. So I do the same. And then I'm going to come back up here. We noted that. And we have an increase in salaries of 4000 All right, we got that one. Remember that short-term and long-term loans? That's gonna go into our financing section. And that retained earnings is just what's happening because of everything else in the company. So that's not um, impacting our cash flow statement. So that's all that is added into our operating section. We kind of covered everything here. Make sure I've got everything. I think I do. So if I add this up, then that's why I kind of highlight everything because I tend to get lost when there's so many numbers. So if I add all this up, it should come to a $42,000 increase and then I'm going to add those two numbers up it comes to 69,000 add that to my net income and this is net cash provided by operating activities you would think that would be enough there was a lot of work just to get to one section but we have two more sections to go so let's look at those. They're not as long or as complicated, so it won't be that bad. Our first section is cash flow from investing. So we already noted some of those things that are going into the investing section. Right, we noted we have some short term debt. We noted that equipment increased. We gotta throw that in there. We must have bought some equipment. And then um, one other thing, remember anything that has property, plant, and equipment having to do with that, this sale of property, plant, and equipment. So this cash is a sale of property, plant, and equipment, and therefore should go into the investing section. So we have three things that we're looking for. And that's kind of why I went through that journal entry to begin with, just so we know how much cash was involved, because we're gonna need that. So I'm gonna put that in here first. We have our sale of equipment. That was the cash we received from that transaction. We obviously purchased some equipment because our amount went up, right? So if we look up here, we look at that equipment, our amount increased by 24,000. 
But remember, we also sold some equipment. We sold $20,000 worth of equipment. So technically, the amount of our increase in equipment is actually 44,000. So we must have purchased 44,000 worth of equipment. And that's a deduction because we bought, we spent some cash. And then the last thing that we're going to include here is this investing section. I'm gonna highlight these because we took care of that. The investments also increased, so we must have purchased some more. So that was a deduction in cash. And that was a purchase of investments. So we're going to total that up, and it's negative 53,000. And since we're, it's a negative amount, we actually have negative cash. This is net cash used by investing activities. So notice the difference here, we're net cash provided versus net cash used. And finally, our last section here is the cash flow from financing activities. And again, we kind of labeled some things out here. We'll start at the top. Because remember, this part was financing that $6,000 of dividends. And then we also had um, some short-term and long-term loan payable decreases. So let's record all of those. So we have the dividend payment. That was $6,000. Then we have principal payments on short-term and long-term loans. The short-term one was 2,000, if I remember right. And the long-term was 9,000. Add those up, and we have a total of negative 17,000. Again, this is called net cash used by financing activities. So now that we have all of these numbers done, we're going to look at the net effect. And if I add up those numbers on the side here, the 69, 53, 17, I will get my net decrease in cash of 1,000. Now I'm gonna look at the cash at the beginning of the period. That beginning bounce. That's given to me in my balance sheet. Right? The cash at the beginning of the period, what I started with was 7,000. And what I should end with is 6,000. That's a good check figure to make sure you did everything right. So the cash at the beginning, 7,000. If I do that math. I do come to 6,000, which is what I'm supposed to. So if you don't do something right, your cash balances are not going to agree. So make sure you look at those. Um, some of the other information that probably would just to note is that these... Um, like the interest expense here, 
you know, that's going to be in that supplemental information showing that that was paid. So just note that, that some of this goes into that supplemental information. But the main thing I want you to get out of this is how to do that indirect method. Now, you're not going to have to do a whole indirect method statement on an exam. That would just be way too time consuming. So the way we test this is really, do you know what goes into what section, right? So let's take a look and try to see what how this long problem would translate into a short multiple choice problem. So when using the indirect method to prepare the we're looking at the operating section. We want to make sure when you read these problems um, that you point out, you know, which section they're looking for. They want to know um, which of the following is deducted from that net income. So if we have an increase in accounts received or a decrease in accounts receivable, Remember, that's an asset. We do the opposite. So accounts receivable in this situation would actually be increased. So I know then that that's not the answer because they want to know what's deducted. Then I can eliminate D because that's basically saying all of the above. Depreciation expense any of those non-cash expenses are added back. They're not deducted. They're added back to our net income. Therefore, it has to be B, the sale of equipment. And then let's look at another one using the indirect method. Oops, this is a mistake. We're not looking at the operating section. We're just looking at the statement of cash flows, which is included in the investing activities. So here we're looking for investing activities. They want to know, do you know what goes into what section? Not only the first one's looking at, do you know it's an increase or decrease? This is just asking what goes in what section? So accounts receivable, we already went through that. That's the operating section. We know that that's added back. Um, dividends. Remember, this is the financing section. That one's a kind of a confusing one. So we already know it's not all of these, right? So it's got to be B by default, but we should also know that property, plant, and equipment relates to that investing section. Again, don't forget to watch those five minute videos if you need some additional help in this area, or you can always email me with questions.